Hi there, this video is going to show you how to go from uh, ionic names, covalent names, and acid names into the respective formulas. All these naming systems are going to be combined in this one video. They'll be separated by type, and I'll discuss how you know what kind of formula you are looking at. So this first sheet is going to be the ionic formulas. We know that they are ionic because they do not contain the word acid, and then these do not um, contain a prefix. Um, the one prefix we would see would be for di for chromate. If we have dichromate, that's still ionic because dichromate is a polyatomic ion. So on these ones, you want to write down the ion symbol and charge above each name. And then you have to crisscross, make sure that your charges cancel. Plus one, minus one, cancel, so I don't need to crisscross. Potassium iodide, just Ki. Next formula, calcium hydroxide. Calcium Ca plus 2, hydroxides OH minus 1, plus 2 minus 1 don't cancel, so I need to crisscross. This 2 is going to come on the back side of the hydroxide ion. Now since there's two different symbols here, I need to use parentheses. So Ca, parentheses, OH, 2, and this 1 is going to come on the back side of the calcium, but I can omit writing a 1. Notice I didn't write a plus in front of my subscript 2. The nickel 2 oxide, because it's nickel 2, I know it's Ni plus 2, oxides O minus 2, plus 2 minus 2 cancel, so it's just Ni O. And again, these were all ionic because the acid name wasn't included, and then also prefixes weren't provided. Next sheet, these are all going to be covalent. I know they are covalent because all of these have at least one prefix. Remember that the second name always has a prefix. The first name has a prefix if the subscripts two are greater. So on these, you want to write down the symbol again, just like we did for the ionic. And since there's no prefix, my subscript's going to be one, which I won't need to use. The um, symbol for fluoride is F. Tetra means four, so my subscript will be four. So CF4 is going to be my formula. Phosphorus tribromide. It's going to be a P for phosphorus, subscript 1, which I can omit. Bromide is Br, subscript 3 from the tri. So that makes it P, Br, sub 3. Sulfur dioxide, sulfur is just S, again, no prefix. Di is going to be 2 on the oxide, so O sub 2. Formula is SO2. So these are really pretty straightforward. The key with the covalent, just making sure that you do not crisscross your prefixes because you crisscross on acids and ionics. <clears throat> Hypochlorous acid. So on these, you want to drop the uh, suffix on these. So OUS came from ite, which means that the anion for this acid is hypochlorite, which is just ClO minus 1. So to re reiterate what I just did, I took the name, I crossed off the suffix and replaced it with what it came from as an anion. And then I found that anion and I wrote it down with its charge. Acid, we're kind of saying, represents the hydrogen ion. Now we have to do the plus on the beginning of your formula. So it's HClO plus one minus one. I do not need to crisscross, but you do need to check for crisscrossing in acids. <clears throat> Perchloric acid. Because it ends in ic and it doesn't start with hydro, it came from eight. So that means I'm looking for the perchlorate anion, which would be ClO4 minus 1. Acid means hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion goes on the front end, plus 1, minus 1. No need to crisscross this. Hydroiodic. Because it begins with hydro and ends with ic, I can cross off the hydro and the ic and replace it with ide. That comes from ide. So iodide, which is I minus 1. Acid is going to be H plus 1. So in this case, it says HI because plus 1 minus 1 cancels. So in all three of these examples, there were no need to crisscross. If you do crisscross, your anion is going to be the only thing bringing a subscript. Your hydrogen may get a subscript. You will never put a subscript on the back end since your hydrogen is a plus 1 ion. You will not bring the 1 on the back end of your anion. So after watching this video, you should know how to take an ionic name, covalent name, and an acid name and turn them back into their formulas, and you should have a pretty good idea of how to tell what kind of formula you have in front of you. <clears throat>
typically it's easiest to identify an acid formula because you see, or an acid name because you see the word acid. So label those with A so you know what you have. Then I would say the next easiest kind is to see the covalent because you're going to see lots of prefixes. And then finally, the remaining one should be ionic. As long as you don't have a dichromate, you shouldn't get uh, tripped up. But you should also know dichromate because we practice a lot of those. I hope that helps.